It's time for a new revolution in your sports parenting, one that doesn't involve headaches, tears, and heading down the path of unknown. Whether you're trying to get your child into golf, help them play competitively, or have them play to collegiate level, you're in the right place. This show is for any parent or child who plays golf and wants to build a better team at home and on the course. This is the Raising Golfers Podcast. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Travis Hauser, PGA professional and father of two young boys. Last week, we had Chris Odinger, head coach of the Holy Names golf team, come and talk to us about the college golf recruitment process. So I thought it'd be interesting if this week we actually bring on a Division II college golf player. Hayden Huey, he recently graduated from UC San Diego, playing four successful years on their golf team. Yeah, um, at UCSD, it was definitely a transition because the academics are definitely very challenging. So the first year, I know I struggled a lot just to balance school and golf. But once I got the hang of it to, to manage my time properly and, and set my priorities straight, that helped me a lot to, to focus on not only academics, but also golf. In his junior year, he had an average scoring of 72.5, which was his team's best. And he was UC San Diego's top finisher in 11 of 13 tournaments. Hayden is a kid that I've known for a long time as he went through the junior program uh, at the golf course I worked at, at Los Positas Golf Course in the San Francisco Bay Area. He's going to share his experience going through Division II college golf, how it is to balance both academics and playing on the golf team, and his positive experience that he had over the last four years. All right, Hayden, welcome to the show, buddy. Thank you, Travis. Hey, man. So uh, it's obviously been a long time since I've seen you, and we've known each other for quite some time. But since the last time I did see you, you have gone to college and you've graduated. So congratulations to you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. I've got so many fond memories of our times back at Los Positas Golf Course as you as a junior. And uh, at that time, I, I remember you being out there almost every single day of the week. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was there every day, pretty much just practicing with my friends, just trying to get better, um, you know, just, 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 just having fun out there. Well, that was for sure. I mean, one thing I do remember is you always would practice hard, but at the same time, I do remember you would always spend time with the kids that were older than you and the kids that were younger than you. So I would see you practicing, you'd be focused in your practice, but then, you know, some kids would come over and say, hey, hey, do you want to play a game? And you were obviously always, always down to join them for that. So that, I thought that was always cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I was always looking for some competition. So if 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 anyone was out there, I, I, I was down. Yeah, that's cool. And so, you know, going back to your junior career, I, I, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning in a minute. But just a couple of highlights that I remember from the time that you were still practicing at Los Positas Golf Course before you went on to, to university. But you you actually were part of that 2012 PGA Junior League National Championship team, weren't you? Oh yeah, that 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 was so much fun. Just playing with the team, uh, traveling to a bunch of tournaments. Um, yeah, it, it was it was a blast. Do you have fond memories of the PGA Junior League? Is that kind of some of the the best memories of your junior golf career leading up to up to college? I would definitely say so because that was one of the very first like team experiences that I had. And just playing in like the scramble format just makes makes golf more 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 into that team sport than the individual sport that we're all used to playing. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, I think the PGA Junior League is such an awesome program, and I would recommend pretty much any kid going through junior golf to participate in that league because I just think there's so many positives, like you said, from the scramble format, the team format. You know, you got your numbers. Some mm-hmm. some of the teams have names in the back. I just think that the PGA Junior League just offers such a cool environment for for young junior golfers and I definitely know that from watching you play I could tell you really enjoyed it yeah yeah for sure you know I actually don't know this how old were you when you started playing golf um so my dad first brought me out to the golf course when I was six years old so we went to the range and he taught me how to swing and all that so that was the first time I started like actually swinging the golf club and then um, I started playing competitive golf I think my first like competition was the drive chip and putt challenge. That was when I was eight years old, and then from there on, it's 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 history, I guess. 
Yeah, for sure. I would say that. And so you started or you started competing, I guess, at the drive chip and putt when you were eight. And did your dad play golf before that? Yeah, he did. Um, he was just like a recreational golfer. I think he mostly got hooked into it just watching Tiger Woods on TV. So that's that. That's what made him start playing golf. That's cool. And so he got both you and your sister involved in the game. Yeah, yeah, he did. Obviously, eight years old, you're in your first competition. Fast forward four years. Is that how old were you when you played on the 2012 uh, championship team for the PGA Junior League? I forget what the age limit was, but I was like, I was at that age limit. I think it was 12 or 13. I, I, I don't remember. So fast forward four or five years and you're playing on a championship team, which is yeah, the, crazy. <laughs> you, were the, you were the nation's best team in the entire country. I mean, that's that's absolutely amazing. So after, you know, you started doing, you know, the competition at eight years old, what was it about golf that you liked so much? I just instantly fell in love with the game. I, I would spend hours on the putting green, just, just watching that ball go in was just so satisfying to me. And then just, just watching like the PGA Tour pros, especially Tiger Woods on TV, just just made me want to be like them. So that, that, that was what pushed me, I think. And I remember, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, but you spent a lot of time on the putting green, and I assume that was your favorite part of practice. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It is. All right. That's cool. So uh, so you got in the game from your dad, and you obviously started playing and improving very quickly. And how important for you was it that you found a group of friends to practice and play with at such a young age leading up to, let's just say, 2012? Oh yeah, that 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 was huge because um I could go out with those friends and just play golf, have fun and then at the same time we would we would play in like some some competition, some some games on the golf course. So um that really pushed me to get better at the game and try to beat them the 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 next time we played. And when you were at that age, were your parents giving you much pressure to be good at golf? Um no, not 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 at that time. They were just pretty much happy that I would I, I had something that I liked to do, so they would just let me free on, on, on the golf course with my friends, so that was really nice. That's cool. And did you play any other sports? Um, I did. Um, I grew up playing tennis, too. So I think I had a year of um, tennis lessons, and then uh, leading up to, I think, eighth grade or or seventh grade, I I figured that I had to choose one of the sports that I wanted to focus on in in, in order to, to 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 really get good at. So I, I was between tennis and golf, and I ultimately chose golf just because I I loved it so much. I see. So that was you, you just had more love for the game of golf than you did for tennis at that point, yeah. Right. Right. Well, I would say there's probably no regrets looking back at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. De- definitely not. <laughs> Getting up to the point where you're now playing high school golf, you know, at what point did you start to think maybe you'd want to play college golf? Um, I think it was either sophomore or junior year because um, I played alongside Jacob Solomon, who was an outstanding junior golfer, and he plays or he he played for Auburn, and now he's playing um, on some mini tours around the country. But yeah, just watching him play and um, just just think about like how I could be there too and play in college golf that 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 just made me want to play college golf just just watching him I think at that point when you started realizing that you wanted to play college golf did you start to change anything in your practice or your the play you had on the course um I don't think I really changed the the practice but I had a, like I had a different mindset going going into um playing golf I, I I definitely put more pressure on myself I think just to improve and and, and get better because I knew that I had to impress these college coaches in order to get on their team. So there was that added pressure, but I think ultimately it, it helped me a lot to improve my golf game. When you started dedicating yourself to play college golf, practice more, put pressure on yourself, what were your parents thinking at that time? They they were in full support of it. They they drove me to a bunch of different tournaments. Um, they, they paid for all the tournaments. I mean, yeah, they, they, they loved it. And did they have any expectations for you as far as tournament results or anything like that leading up to your your college career? Um, no, they 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 were pretty laid back. I would I would say. Um, I mean, obviously they, they they want me to play my best, but even even when I had bad tournaments, they would always pick me up. So 
um yeah not not any like high expectations because i think that myself i i already set pretty high expectations for myself so i think they don't need to add on to that and do you think that that type of support from your parents actually helped you to get to college golf and play for a college team yeah yeah i i i definitely think so because they were very positive about it and that just helped me keep going and um yeah just just keep playing golf oh that's so cool man that's great to hear so now you're you're getting towards your junior senior year of high school and what are you doing are you playing in different tournaments to try to get the attention from college coaches are you contacting coaches what was that looking like those last few years of high school Uh, those last few years so um my parents helped me do like a whole like college search um so they helped me like look up a bunch of different colleges mostly in california because i wanted to stay in california so they would look at the academics and like how good the team was and if i had like a real shot to to play for that team yeah and then i i I played in a bunch of tournaments like ajga um the jtnc um like amateur uh, golf.com tournaments. I remember in, in, in my senior year, I played in a very specific AJGA tournament for like seniors that, that haven't gotten an, an offer yet who would play in this like senior uh, showcase in Las Vegas where there was like 20 different coaches that would come there and like watch all of the players play. So how did you feel about going into that tournament? How, how, how did you feel emotionally? And did you think that your game was ready for, for that type of an event? Yeah. I mean, I, I was definitely nervous just, just thinking about all the coaches being there, but um, I knew that I, I had the game to impress the coaches. So I just went out there, kept my head down, just played golf. And is that how you got looks from UC San Diego? Actually, I, I never got offered a spot on the team at UC San Diego until I got in academically into the school. So, like, I, I was getting um, interest from mostly Division three schools because um, my game at the time, it wasn't very polished. I, was, I, I, I had good rounds, but I also had some high numbers. Um, but, yeah, um, I didn't get into UCSD until I got in academically. And then I met with the golf coach there, and then he... He told me that he had a spot on the team for me after that. So That's very interesting because that's kind of the complete opposite of how you hear most players get into college golf teams, right? I mean, they go through the whole recruitment process. You know, they have the signing and all of that. And like what you did is you had you still held confidence in your game going all the way down to San Diego. You're still not even on the team yet, right? You probably even started school before even knowing that you were on the golf team. And then you didn't give up, right? I mean, that, that's I think that's a, that's a cool story in itself, right? I mean, were you still nervous when you went down to UC San Diego, not knowing that you whether you'd play collegiate golf or not? Yeah, definitely. I, I was ready to play in their walk on tournament and just just play my heart out to try to make it onto the team. But thankfully, um, a, a couple guys before uh, they they quit the team, so that opened up a spot for me. Yeah, that's cool. And did you know going into UC San Diego? Did you know that that team and that environment would, would fit for you? Or were you going down there just academically in the hopes that the golf team would match up with your type of play and your personality? Yeah, I mean, at that time, I, I, I had no idea what the team was like. So I was just taking a chance just going down there academically and, and, and playing on the team, hopefully. Wow, that's 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 quite the feat. I mean, we're going to fast forward a few years and then we're going to come back. But, you know, your 2018-2019 season, right? You you were the top finisher of 11 of 13 tournaments on your team. That's right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's quite impressive because here's a guy that didn't even get recruited for the team, walked on, and then by the time you get to your junior year, you're, you're basically the best player on the team. I think the reason that I didn't get an offer on, on that team, that pushed me to... to to work harder and prove myself to the rest of the team that I, I deserve to be on that team. So I, I just worked really hard um, between my sophomore and junior year because I, I, I wasn't very happy with how I played the first two years. So I, I just really worked hard and the, the, the results showed. Well, so what did you learn from those first two years of, of college golf? Because I think a lot of kids go in, they play their first two years, they got expectations. Of course, the expectations are through the roof, right? As mine would be. But I'm sure there's some learning curve when you get into college golf. It's not the same as high school golf, is it? So talk us through those first few years and you know, tell me a little bit more about that experience and the things that you learned that helped you spring forward in your junior year. 
Yeah, um, at UCSD, it was definitely a transition because the academics are definitely very challenging. So the first year, I know I struggled a lot just to balance school and golf, but once I got the hang of it to to manage my time properly and and set my priorities straight, that helped me a lot to to focus on not only academics but also golf. And then also, um, what I changed the most. I think w- was my my mental side of the game and my body language on the golf course because in college we'd play those those thirty six whole days where you're, you're you're bound to have a bad shot here and there but if you let that bad shot affect you then it will drag on to the whole thirty six holes so I think what I learned the most was just to forget about the bad shots and move on because um, ultimately you have so many holes left left to play so it's a waste if you just let yourself down after one bad shot so did anybody help you with that with the mental side of the game in the beginning my my coach Jim Reagan he helped me a lot he told me that I had to fix my body language in order to play better golf so he just told me to never like let my head droop down um keep that energy up and and yeah that's 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 pretty much it was that an easy task at first um, definitely not because I would find myself just, just going back to that place where I knew I was like, just, just like kicking myself, just, just like thinking about how bad a player I was. But ultimately throughout just playing more tournaments, I finally learned that I had to treat myself better to, uh, play better golf ultimately. And did you bounce in these ideas off some of the older players in the team? Um, actually, no, it, it was more of a individual journey I had on myself, just, just playing in tournaments. So when you had those, those tough times mentally, you know, you were thinking it through yourself and then you had your coach that was assisting you in those situations, right? Right, right. All right. And what exactly does a practice look like for a college golf player or what would practices like for you? Were they on the range? Were they on the golf course? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so at UCSD, it's not your typical college golf practice because um, all our like academic schedules, we we couldn't line it up, so we couldn't get the whole team at a practice at a time if it was on the 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 weekdays. But we would play on the weekends. Usually have qualifiers, but during the um, the week, we would probably have two or three guys on the team meet at once and then you would meet with a coach we would work on short game for one to two hours that's probably twice a week and then we have workouts in the morning twice a week that's with our trainer and then pretty much whenever you have free time the coach just tells you to go practice on your own or just contact guys on the team to see if they want to practice together so it wasn't a very um, structured practice schedule um it was more just you would practice on your own time and then uh, meet with the coach like one to two times a week to work on your short game. It was, it, it was mostly short game stuff. Definitely our coach barely saw us on the range because he thought short game would improve our team performance the most. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Because we could hit bad shots here and there, but ultimately if 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 you have a good short game, you're always having a pretty good chance at par. So that definitely helps a lot. And you touched on fitness. You had two hours of fitness in the morning. Is that right? Yeah. So it's twice a week um, and then it's one hour each. Oh, I see. Okay. And what do those fitness classes and, and programs look like? Yeah. So mostly we're just lifting weights. Um, before each workout, we have like a little band workout where we work on our hip flexibility and other types of flexibility. And then we dive into the workout, which usually looks like some leg workout. So usually deadlifts, lunges, squats, those sort of things. And then a little bit of upper body work to some pull-ups, push-ups. And then we usually finish off with core so we do like planks, V-ups, and, and, and those sort of things. So that's great. And then at what point did you start seeing results from doing these, these workouts? Because you probably weren't training as hard or if at all in high school, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, so we actually didn't start doing those workouts until sophomore year. And then that year was, was, was definitely difficult to get used to it because I was like, sore the first few times and it was hard to swing the club that way but 
once I got the hang of it, I think it really paid off, especially on those 36 whole days where it can just tire you out. So it definitely gave us the endurance to keep on playing at, at, at our best. That's cool. Now, when you guys are playing in tournaments, is the coach keeping track of statistics like strokes gained, greens and regulation, fairways, driving distance? Who's keeping track of statistics like that? So our coach doesn't do that. He just, he watches us play and he notices like the things that the, the simple mistakes that we make. So like if we happen to short side ourselves to a front pin and then we make bogey because a huge thing for him was that he always wanted us to aim somewhere between the middle of the green and the pin on our approach shots so that we don't happen to be short side and, and then have like an impossible shot to, to make par. Um, so he was more focused on the strategy side. As, as far as statistics, um, some guys on the team kept track of their own statistics like myself. So I like to look at the number of putts I had around the number of greens I hit, how many times I got up and down when I missed the green, and fairways hit, and, and, and stuff like that. All right, that's good. And did you and your coach together set any goals for a certain period of time, whether it was each season or this month or this week? Did you guys do anything with that? Yeah, um, as I was talking about earlier, before each tournament, I feel like our coach has set a certain strategy about how to beat the golf course, if that's like hitting more fairways or hitting more greens and, and, and stuff like that. But throughout the whole season, we always have that goal of making it to regionals and then ultimately going to nationals and, and, and winning that. But that's always just taking it one step at a time, just, just going to each tournament and trying to play our best there. As far as individually, I... I had goals of winning a tournament individually because I felt like if I aim to win the tournament and perform my best, ultimately that's going to help the team the most. So that that was pretty much my goal going into each tournament. Very cool. What was it like traveling around to different golf courses in different parts of the country? Because that's something that's quite different about college golf, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it was a blast. I mean, traveling with... A bunch of guys you're you're all friends together it was a blast to to travel and see different places but it was also very tiring especially uh, my junior year we went to nationals i i remember uh we had to get used to the time difference in in west virginia and then we were also going into finals week that that week so most of us were like just studying until like midnight just just trying to catch up on work and then we would have to play the next day so it's it's definitely very tiring but i think it's worth it and were there any difficulties with different types of grass or different types of course layouts based on different areas of the country for the most part no um although i i do remember a course in washington that was unlike any other course that we played it was it was very very narrow, very tree lined. So it was it was very much target golf, which is what we haven't experienced. So that definitely got some time to get used to. But most of the time, um, the grass and the conditions didn't really play much of a factor. Right. All right. Cool. And, you know, college golf, I think there's, I'm, I'm sure in certain tournaments and certainly probably your first few, there's an immense amount of pressure. How did you learn to handle your pressure and your demeanor on the golf course? Yeah, so the last two years, um, the team, we worked alongside a psychologist who helped us through these different high-pressure experiences or, or, or moments. So she would have us go through three different breathing exercises to either lower our heart rate or heighten our, our, our heart rate. So it would be something as simple as like, breathe in for three seconds and then breathe out for, for six seconds. That's just in order to like calm us down if we're in a high pressure situation, if we have like a putt to make it to regionals or if we have a putt to win the tournament in those cases. And did that help your game? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I remember um, one of my best performances was at regionals and I definitely used that breathing technique a lot because I was playing really good golf, but I wanted to keep that going. So I didn't want to get too ahead of myself and get too excited. So I used that breathing technique to, to calm myself down and keep my head pretty level. And that was the NCAA South Central and West Regional. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And, and just put a perspective on that. So you went 69, 69, 67. You shot total 11 under par and came in second place in that tournament. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 
I mean, that's quite the feat there. I mean, tell us a little bit about that experience. Going into that tournament, um, from the the last tournament, I shot I think three seventy threes in a row. So, I, I I I was a little bit disappointed because I was playing really well into that. So I definitely had that in the back of my mind. So I wanted to play a lot better, and my confidence level was definitely through the roof at that point. So I knew if I just focused on my game and just just stayed steady, that putts were going to drop. I was bound to play good golf. And that certainly set the tone for your team to move on to nationals, didn't it? Definitely, yeah. I mean, how cool was that? That was awesome. I mean, I remember that final round of of regionals. I was playing really good golf. I think I was four or five under through through 15 holes. And then I was thinking to myself that I individually probably have played my way into nationals, but I really wanted the team to to get there as well. And I, I... I haven't looked at the scores of the whole day. So walking down 18th hole, and then I, I, I think I made par to shoot 67. And then walking towards my team, I was just hoping that, that they played well too. And then my coach comes up to me and he says, we made it. And then I, I, I was just so happy at that moment. Oh, that's so cool. That's great. And so yeah, how do you stay in the present though, in those situations? Like, obviously there's this end goal. You want to get to nationals. You want your team to get to nationals. You're, you said you're four or five under through 14, 15 holes. How do you stay in the present for those last few holes without getting ahead of yourself? Because there's so many stories of, of players getting ahead of themselves and obviously their game completely turns around for the negative. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, whenever I was thinking ahead, I would just catch myself and just focus on the shot at the moment, just just focus on going through my routine. Um, and then I know that I have a, a tendency to get a little bit quick with my routine. So normally I would just try to slow down and really focus on that target if it was the middle of the green or if I was just pin seeking right, right at the hole. So then you go to nationals, right? And wh- where were the nationals played at? Yeah, so it was played at Glade Springs Golf Resort in West Virginia. You know, I'm looking at your scores here, and you came tied for 28th as an individual, which I think is fantastic at a national championship. And tell us about that experience getting to nationals. How'd you feel? I know you mentioned that you were a little bit tired from preparing for your finals for school, but let's talk about the golf side. How'd you, how, how did everything feel when you were there? Um, I remember playing the practice round, and then... We were all just so overwhelmed just being there. I mean, I feel like our team making it to nationals, we kind of got a little bit complacent and didn't push ourselves to to try and win because we thought, oh, like we already made it to nationals. So that that was already the goal that we um, got to that, that we set earlier in the season. So I feel like we, we definitely could have had a better mindset, but it was definitely one of the most memorable experiences that, I, that I've had in college golf, just playing with the team there and, and, and playing against the top schools in the nation. That, that was awesome. Oh, man, that's so cool. And junior year, your average scoring was just right around even par. And, you know, just to put a perspective on that, if you look at most collegiate players, I would say that most of their season averages are actually just a hair over par. That season for you just must have felt fantastic. I mean, was that your was that kind of your your pinnacle season? Would you say in your collegiate career? Yeah, I would definitely agree to that. I think that spring season was some of the best golf I've I've ever played, honestly. <laughs> yeah, and you know, you you actually came back up to close to your hometown in the San Francisco Bay Area. You played at Harding Park for the Bay Area Invitational. Is that right? Mm-hmm, yeah. I mean, that's where the PGA Championship was. And, you know, you finished in fourth place in that event and shot a combined one under par. I mean, that must have been really cool. Yeah, that was awesome because my whole family, they they, they came out to watch me play too. And then, yeah, just being near near home, that, that, that was a great feeling to have. So looking back on your college golf career, is there anything that you wish you knew before you you joined a college golf team, let's say in high school, that you now know that would have helped you throughout those four years of playing golf? Mostly on the mental side of the sport. Like I was talking about earlier, those 36 hole rounds are very tiring and and, and gruesome. So just trying to stay focused mentally and not let yourself get too high or too low. I think that was one of the main lessons that I've learned from college golf. 
Yeah, I would agree with you. You know, if you're a high school player, how do you stay in the moment? I mean, how do you stay calm? How can you do that? I mean, should somebody, do you think somebody should seek help with a, like a sports psychologist or how can you do that at such a young age to then prepare yourself for college golf? I think for everyone, they're going to take a different journey through that. Like myself, I learned mostly by myself just playing in tournaments and, and, and learning about how these the, these better players that I've played with, how they can stay so focused and calm. But yeah, I would definitely recommend to reach out to either a golf coach or a psychologist because speaking with my golf coach in college also, that helped me a lot. So I think just, just talking to either a college golfer or an or an older player or a coach that helps a lot yeah for sure i would agree what would you say was the most difficult thing about your college experience and that can be academically or on the golf course most difficult thing for me was probably the first two years i i I had a really difficult time balancing school and golf i remember in sophomore year there was one quarter where i took two lab classes and then those were like three-hour labs and then I had them on the same day which was on on a Wednesday which is the day we come back from tournaments because our tournaments are Monday Tuesday so just just coming back from a tournament you're, you're already tired and you go the next day usually we work out in the morning and then I have class from like like 10 a.m. until like 6 p.m. so it was definitely a very tiring time for me But um, I just found a way to push through it because I had the help of my teammates and my coach and and friends, too. How'd they help you? It was just moral support, mostly. They're in the same boat as you, right? (laughs) Exactly. You guys guys just basically all helped each other out and said, okay, look, you know, we've got to have passing grades, but we also suddenly play good golf. So when you started having to dedicate time for school and you probably had to stay focused at that point to be able to then be able to go out and practice or play to your full potential as well, right? I mean, that's not easy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do you think that the major that you chose, did that make it more difficult? Are there other majors out there that some guys in your team had that seemed like it was easier for them as far as balancing the academics and and the golf? Yeah, I think the major I chose was definitely not an easy major. Um, I majored in structural engineering. So I was definitely a handful to... um, to handle with golf the other guys on the team i would say half of them took easier majors and the the other half took pretty challenging ones too but it it was nice to feel like i wasn't alone in 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 this struggle to, to to balance school and golf right yeah no that's that's definitely helpful golf is an individual sport but you also play on a team and i know you touched on the pga junior league that kind of helped groom you into understanding team golf you obviously play team golf in high school, but at some point, you're not just playing for yourself. You're playing for the team. And like you said, going into the uh, at the end of the regionals, you were just hoping that your whole team would be able to make it to nationals. You know, what was it about your team that allowed you guys to play so well together and eventually get to the national championship? I feel like we just wanted to make sure that we don't let each other down. So I guess that that fear of, of not playing up to our team's expectations ultimately pushed us to play better. You guys basically held each other accountable, yeah? Was it like, were guys checking in with each other, like how how much practice you were doing or what scores you were shooting your practice rounds? In practice, we would usually just play a bunch of like competitions between ourselves to to see who, who was the best golfer that day and, and stuff like that. But I feel like throughout the team, it was like this unspoken like mindset that we all had that we were going to play and make it to nationals and ultimately have a chance to win nationals. So it was focus that we all had and, and this mission that, 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 that we were on. Coming from your, your junior, senior now in college, was there any advice you gave to some of the freshmen coming onto the team? Yeah, the most advice I gave was just to, to learn the, those first two years about how to really properly manage your time well and then just how to balance like school and golf, just making sure you're doing your homework ahead of time if you're playing in the tournament and not really overwhelming yourself with these difficult classes. Um, because I, I think it's a learning curve to transition from high school to college golf. From the golf side, did you talk to them about you know, not getting upset or 
overwhelmed on a bad hole or a bad shot and tell them about your experiences that you went through for those first two years so that you were able to spring forward into your junior year the way you were? Yeah, definitely. I would tell them to not really focus on those bad shots um, and to think about what you can do to hit your next shot and make up for it and ultimately save par or, or, or even make birdie still. That's great. You've now graduated from college. Obviously, we're we're currently here in a time that's different than we've all been in. Your final season was cut a little bit short. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm sure you've you've gotten past that. You've gotten over that. And, you know, you've got a whole career ahead of you. So what's next for you? In about a week, actually, I'll be playing in my first professional tournament, the SoCal Open in Palm Desert. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to transition to professional golf now. Very cool. And how do you, how do you transition to that? How do you, I mean, how do you get enrolled or how do you qualify for such an event? Tell us a little bit about that process. Mm -hmm. Um, what I did is, is I just looked up a bunch of different tournaments and different tours that I could play on. So I found this tournament and it's as easy as just signing up paying for it and then just just marking off if you're a pro or amateur that 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 was basically it so it was it was a little bit anticlimactic but i think i'll realize it once i'm there cool and and how many days is the event it's a three-day tournament and there's a cut after day two what are your long-term goals ultimately obviously to make it onto the pga tour but i think these first two years i definitely want to learn about professional golf and 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 try to learn more more about my golf game too. So I have that end goal of the PGA Tour, but there's also a bunch of different steps I have to take. So um, obviously the the easiest would be like to make my first cut and then move on from there to finish in the top 20 in a tournament, top 10, and then ultimately win a tournament. And then um, next year, I think I'll be playing in the Corn Ferry Q School. So I have that in mind too to qualify into the Corn Ferry Tour and then ultimately play well there to qualify into the PGA Tour. Is anybody helping you? Do you, do you have a swing coach right now? Uh, right now, I don't. I, I'm doing a solo mission right now, but I have the full support of my parents. They're providing um, financial support for all these tournaments. And yeah, just, just having my family behind me. I do have some mentors on, on, on professional golf, such as Chris Odinger, who, who I was friends with back, back at Lospo. Very cool. And so you're just talking to him about some, you know, about professional golf and some expectations mm-hmm. that you should have and maybe help you with some of the goal setting that you might have get along the way. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Well, that's so cool. So the last thing I'm going to ask you before you go is, what would be some words of inspiration for aspiring college golfers? Some, some words of, of, of inspiration. Um, I would just tell them that no matter what, to keep fighting for that, for what you're dreaming of and never stop working hard because you, you never know what opportunities you're, you're going to have in, in the future. Perfect. Yeah, you couldn't have said it better. Hayden, man, I'll tell you what, what a career you've had so far, and you've still got so much potential ahead of you. I'm really proud of what you've done. I mean, I have very fond memories of you as a junior golfer, and I just think your story is so amazing that you were able to walk on to a university team and not only just walk on, but by the time you were a junior, you were the best player on the team. And so you, you went from, you weren't looked at from the colleges that you wanted to go to and you didn't get a scholarship, but you had a passion and a drive to get on a college golf team, right? And and your parents believed in you and they supported you the whole way. I mean, that must have just been so helpful to give you the confidence to know that you can actually do this and you never gave up. I mean, I think that's just such a cool story. And then you go in and in your regionals, you shoot 11 under par and you help boost your team to the national championship. I mean, that is a cool story, man. And I mean, I just can't say enough. I think that's I think that's amazing. And I really look forward to following you on your professional career. And I'm going to wish you all the best of luck. And I think you've got so much ahead of you. So keep up the good work. And yeah, man, I look forward to seeing what comes of it. Thank you so much. It was an absolute pleasure to be to be on your podcast. It's been a great time catching up with you and just hearing your story and sharing it with others. I think they'll really appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. 
All right, there you have it. Hayden Huey, what a great kid. I, like I said before, I have so many fond memories of practicing and playing with him and just watching him practice and play at Las Positas Golf Course. I myself even went out and tried to challenge him in some activities and games. And from my experience, I usually lost. So he is a good player and he's got a bright future in front of him. But man, what a story he had for college golf. I mean, he never gave up and just walked on at UC San Diego and got a spot in the team. And I think a good learning lesson for everyone is just to never give up. If you really want to play college golf, well, I'm sure you can find a place to play. I'm sure you can find a school that you enjoy, and I'm sure you'll find a team that matches well with your personality. So don't give up and keep striving for your best potential and just trust your game and trust yourself and know that you can do it. I mean, he had such a learning experience after walking onto the golf team where he was in this completely new environment didn't know anything about college golf, didn't know anything about the team, the coaches, the players. And after two years of playing on the team, he becomes the number one player. 11 of 13 lowest rounds at his school and goes on to shoot 11 under at his regionals to boost his team to the NCAA championship. I would say he turned himself from a learner into a leader and a role model on that golf team. So the moral of the story I take away is never give up, trust your golf and I know that you will succeed. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode as much as I did and look forward to bringing on more college golf players and having them share their experiences with us so that we can better understand the college golf process and what an experience it is to have. If you enjoy listening to our podcast and the information you got from this episode, do us a favor and continue to support us by hitting that subscribe button and giving us a five-star review. Your continued support will help us continue to grow and be able to interview some of the most experienced parents, coaches, and players in the golf industry to help you continue to raise your golfer to their full potential.